Hello everyone. So in this video, I'm going to go over with you on the loop carousel inside Elementor and Elementor Pro. So these all the plugins that you need in this tutorial. And if you don't have them yet, it will be down in the description of this video. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So when you're in your WP admin that row, what you want to do is head over to your pages and head over and create a new page, the page that you want to add the loop carousel. And if you've seen my previous video where I went over the loop grid, which is going to be popping out right now on stream if you haven't seen it yet head over there and watch it before that because it explains a little more than what we are going to be explaining here because it is a sequential video i will head over and open the edit page where i stopped from the previous video so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go over to my edit page where i have the loop grid and i'm going to continue right from there so what we wanted to do here is scroll to the bottom here and in this box what i want to add here is the loop carousel so drag and drop it right here and here we'll have the same thing as we had inside the loop grid here the same thing we have under layout we have choose the template type under posts and we have the products too so let's create our template and i'll show you everything from there so let's create a template yes i want to save the things that i've made already as we've seen we have here this little box and it will apply all or everything that we've done in this box to everything in the carousel so for example let's make a post carousel with images titles and buttons as we've seen right here yes it will look almost exactly like that but with one difference is i'm gonna add some images so it will look a little better yes this will be a carousel and this would be a grid so it will have all these items right under each other or right next to each other and this would slide so let's do that right now so first of all i want to add the feature image Image, drag and drop it currently I don't have images but I'll add it in a minute as usual you would want to head over to your image resolution and set it to full next up we're gonna go over to our widgets and we'll drag and drop the post title so drag and drop it just underneath the post image now here we will want to style it a little bit but before that you want to link everything under the dynamic tags to your post URL now head over to your styles style it however you want to I'll style it as basic as I can under the typography I'll set it to assist or you can set it to whatever font you would wish to 25 pixels and I'll set it to 700 as bold and under here under line height I will set it to M's 1 Point two. I think it's fine. So next up, we we'll want to add a read more button. So we'll head over back to your widgets and drag and drop a button. So right under the title here, change it to read more or whatever you want to in whatever language you are and also link it to your post URL. Now here you can set it differently. So for example, I want to add those arrows or these little chevrons here on the left or to the right, depending on your own language. And also let's stylize the button. Let's add the text color to, let's set it to white and the background color, let's set it to black. It's a little different than what we had here. Yes, I know that, but I think it's good. Now I just added some images, so I'll hit update and then I'll refresh this page if you're on Windows Control Shift R or Command Shift R to refresh the page and to clear your cache. Great. So I have some posts here. As you can see here, I have some images right on top here. And I have also an image right here beyond blockchain technology, the rise of 5G technology and so forth. As you can see here already, I have a carousel right here. So first of all, I want to head over back to my template and see that I haven't left anything out. So at a template. As you can see here, we have our image, which is our feature image. We have our title and we have our button. I want to make sure that everything is leading to the same post. One thing here that I haven't showed you in a previous video is that you can also link the image here under the link. And here you can set it to custom URL and again, dynamic tags and click the post URL. In other words, it doesn't matter what the user clicks. It will lead him to this exact post. One more thing, if you don't want the user to click and will be redirected or refresh the page, the exact page that it is on you can also click the wrench icon right next to the post url dynamic tag here click the link option and you can also set it to open a new tab so when the user clicks it will open a new tab so it won't send him or will refresh the page that he is on you can also add the add no follow you can also add a custom attribute if you want to this is a different topic from what we are currently on so i'll leave it to another video if you want to so i'll remove this and i'll just hit update 
So once you're done and you're happy with your template, just click the save and back. So here, the same thing as we had in the loop grid, I'm going to go over what you can do here. So click on this widget and here, as you can see here, we have it set to choose template type and the choose template. You can see here the elementor loop item, whatever item it is giving in. You can also name it differently in the back end. I'll show you in a few minutes how you can do that. You can also show the number of slides here under the six, or you can show, let's say, let's do 10 or whatever number that suits you. Also, you can display the slides. So for example, if you don't want three of them and you want to, let's do five of them, you can see here that it's a little crumped, but again, it still shows it. Yes, I know I've missed a few images on those posts, but bear with me. This is what you can do with it. And I think it's awesome, really awesome. So I'll set it back to three. I just wanted to show you to have that option and slides on scroll. If you want to, you can slide more than one image. For example, you have three slides and you want to slide three of them so for example it will slide three of them in one go so you can see here in a second it will slide all of them as you can see here right now so i'll set it back to one and you can also set them to equal height and if you don't want to you can also toggle that off so it won't display all of them in equal height now the next up we have our query so we have again our source as posts you can have pages landing pages products manual selection current query and related now if i don't want all those posts to be displayed for example like hello world as usually you get it with a new website on wordpress and i want to display only the posts that i have currently with images so for example let's do manual selection and let's do something like bit Coin. Yes, I know, I know. A lot of those posts are just ChatGPT generated. So as you can see here, I've just manually selected all those posts. As you can see here, I know they are a different size of images, but if you want to, I can make a dedicated video on it, how you can resize your images so they will fit exactly the same. I know it is a very important thing, especially when it comes to design. Now here, I just wanted to show you that you can also order them by date, by title, menu order, last modified, common count, and random. So every Every time that a user would refresh the page, those posts would be randomly organized. Also, you can order them by descending or ascending, and you can also name or get a query ID specifically for that. But this is a little more advanced topic that I won't dive deep into this video. You can also have the settings here. You can also set it to autoplay, scroll speed, you can do uh, 5,000 millisecond, which is five seconds. You can also pose and hover, you can disable that. So for example, if I hover it, doesn't matter if I hover or not, it will still not stop it. As you can see here, we have still our timer, that's why it did not switch yet. And we have pause on interaction. If you want to, you can also disable that. And infinite scroll. So let's say you want to display all your posts and you want it to be an infinite scroll, so it would go around and around and around and around, and around without ever stopping. We can also set the direction here. So let's say, for example, you wanted to scroll from right to left. If your language is from right to left or from left to right. Also, you can have the transition duration, for example, set it to 500 milliseconds. Let's do something like... 1000 and you can see here it will be slower if you're familiar with the transition you can see here it's a little smoother so next up we have our navigation here you can also set the navigation however you want to you can stylize the navigation the position of it the vertical the horizontal next arrow vertical horizontal however you want to i will just show you briefly how that works you can also set the icons for example if you want to change them you can also upload a separate svg specifically so it will be unique to your website yes you can also disable them if you want to you can totally disable the arrows so the user would just have to scroll with the mouse as i'm doing it right now but i usually keep it because it's a good practice to keep them on because usually people don't quite go and interact with those posts whatever it's the thoughts on the bottom of it or the arrows on the sides so you can also set it to be in the middle if you want to you can set it at the end and in the start so that usually is the Flexbox container, as you can see here. And you can set the position by pixels. If you want to, you can see I'm moving the arrow right now. You can also set it a little further than what it was before, like minus 35 pixels. And also the vertical, if you want to, that's currently setting up the previous arrow, which is this one, which is here on the left. And you can also set the, if you want it to be a little more in the middle. So let's do something like 25 pixels. 
yeah, 25 pixels. It will be in the middle of everything, sort of. Don't get me totally on that. So also you can set it on the end if you want to, like totally here and just set it here to zero, but I will keep it in the middle and I'll set it here to 25. Also the next arrow, you can also set a different icon as I've already mentioned. And also you can set here the position to be closer or further as I did here before. So let's do the same thing. Let's keep it consistent as minus 35 as I did before. And also here, let's do the position as we did here under 25. So it will be leveled. As you can see here, they are on the same level. They are the same distance from those posts. So next up, we have our pagination. Yes, I know here it was the navigation and the pagination is those little dots here. So let's see what we have here. Under the pagination, we have dots. We have fractions if you want to, if you want one out of six, and then we have our progress. It shows right here on top. So as you can see here, it is black bar and as it scrolls or as it progresses, it just scrolls to the end of it. I usually keep it at none because I think the arrows are totally enough because if you want to show an infinite scroll, I think it's better for that because then the user doesn't know that there are more posts and therefore he can scroll and be more on your website. Now, next up, we have their styles. So we have the gap between slides. So for example, now it sets to 10 pixels. Now you can increase it or decrease it, but I usually keep it as it is. I usually, I don't touch it at all. And under the navigation here, you can also set the size of those arrows. For example, you want to set it to, let's say 30. Yes, I know it's almost the same, but you can also set the color of it. So it will be a little bit more distinctual. So for example, let's do as black, as you can see here, they're turned into black. And when you hover it, they some sort of a light gray. So we'll fix that right now. Let's do hover and let's do again black, but just let's set or decrease the transparency of it. So great. So once I hover it, you can see or barely see that it some sort of changes. Let's increase it a little more. Let's do something like this. And you can see that when I hover it, the left arrow turns slight gray, as you can see here. So the user knows that he hovers the actual arrow. Now, I think that's pretty much good. If you want to, you can set the border radius and the padding and the position it will be inside or it'll be outside. As you can see here right now, it's outside the box and it was inside the box before. But as we can see here, it's still outside of those posts. Now, what also you can do is set the background for those arrows. So let's go back to normal and let's head over and set the background type to be classic or you can make it a gradient if you want to. Now, let's set the background color to white or let's flip it for a second. Let's do the background color to black and then the color to white so it will be distinguishable. So we'll see that there is an arrow over there. So also under the border radius, I usually put that under 50. So it would be a circle. And then also under hover, you can do the same thing. As you can see here, now it turns into somewhat black. It doesn't help us at all, but you can set it to a different color. For example, you want to switch it totally or completely. So let's do the classic background type under the white, and then let's set the color or the color of the arrow to be totally black. So when I hover it, you can see that it changes. Once we're done with it, or once you're happy with what you have, you can totally update it or publish it on your website. So everything that I went over with you on the single post carousel or the loop carousel of those posts can be applied also to the product carousel. So I've cleared the clutter a little bit, so we will be able to be more focused on what we do have here on the products. So the same thing as we had with the posts, you want to just drag and drop the loop carousel into your container or to this dotted box. And right over here will be greeted as before with the new template. Let's start creating our template as we had with the post type. So let's start creating. Yeah, let's save those changes. Let's drag and drop our image. And then as usually I'm setting the image resolution to full. And in here on the image, you want to head over to the dynamic tags and click on the dynamic tags and choose the product image. And then you want to go back to your widgets. And over here, you want to choose a new brand heading or just the post title, but whatever floats your boat. I usually go with the heading and then just put it under the image. And then right over here, you want to choose again, the dynamic tags. And over here, you want to scroll down until you see WooCommerce. And then over here, you want to choose the product title. And over here, what I would suggest you to do is also 
also link the product URL, but unfortunately WooCommerce, when you press the dynamic tags, does not by default has any of the product URL. Only I've seen that in the Jet Engine by Crocoblox. So if you want that, I have in my tutorials going to be popping up right now on your screen where I mentioned that and you'll be able to use that. So as you can see here, we don't have anything particular over here, but you can do the post URL that would also point you to the exact product because don't forget that WooCommerce or WordPress in general just treats these products or posts just as posts. So bear that in mind. Next, what you would want to do is head over to your widgets and then add a button. So drag and drop it just beneath the title. I would first of all would want to center the button and I'll head over back to my content and over here I would want to do something like buy now or you can also add to cart. And over here, yes, you would want to also link it to the add to cart with WooCommerce. Now that would be more applicable. I will stylize that a little bit and I think we're good to go. Once you're done editing this template or this loop carousel of this single product for that matter, you would want to make sure that everything here is ready to go. And if you want to add a few more things, for example, like a post excerpt or the product excerpt for that matter, because we have here also the post excerpt, you can use either the text editor or the post excerpt just when you're using the text editor just make sure you're using the dynamic tags and then choosing the product short description for that matter it would be more applicable than the product description itself and if you want to add reviews what i would suggest you to do is also search for the reviews for example we have stars product rating or the rating itself now you can also put that under that but only if your products have any rating or if you're building that from scratch then i would encourage you to not put that or put it a little later so that's up to you now once you're done as usual you just press the update button and then just save and back now you might be able to notice that none of the images or the titles are appearing on this page or on this loop carousel for the products that i have just set it up now what you want to do or what you want to make sure is when you go to edit this loop carousel is that the choose template type is not set to post is set to products and then it will show you all the products that you have on your shop now obviously these are demo products these are products by woocommerce and if you missed this tutorial where you would be able to import the demo products by woocommerce now these are new products as you can see here these are not the default or cartoonish products that we usually seen on old tutorials so these are the new ones and if you want to see that this tutorial will be popping up right now and other than that everything is the same here as you can see here the number of slides is also six the slides on display is three you can also increase it to for example let's say five or two or whatever you want to or even seven if you want to as you can see here we have different heights so you can also make it equal height or disable it altogether only depends on you but just make sure that the image also corresponds to the height of all the other images on your shop it's a good practice to do that now i will change it back to three and also slides on scroll the same thing here and the query itself also the latest product this is what it said right now you can exclude term author all the same thing as we've seen on the loop carousel for the post type now i don't have anything to change here other than just set that to 1 20th of milliseconds so it will be smoother so also the navigation i just want to disable those little dots as you can see here so i'll go to my pagination and i will just disable it all together and then i have my own loop carousel of my products now loop carousel can be put on your home page or any page that you want to display a little more products of that sort now one thing that you can also do with this loop carousel go to your query and over here make sure that these ones are set to either related products if you want to set it on a single product page and then you'll be able to promote even more products that are related to the product or just set it to upsells or cross sells or even sell or the latest products as you can see here right now now the current query i would usually suggest you to use that only if you are setting it to the archive page then it will be more fit to my own opinion because then it will drag that information from the current query that the user just set or search for so yeah that's pretty much for this and as you can see here under the style we have also the gap between slides as you can see here you can space them out a little so let's do something like 40 
yeah that should be fine or even a little less yet yeah, let's do 20 yeah and then we have the navigation also you can change the icon size over here of these arrows and styles are even more and yeah that's pretty much it this is how you customize your edit you can create your own loop carousel on your website whether it's going to be on your single product page or your home page or wherever you want to put this widget on your website i really hope this video helped you and if it did i'd be really glad to if you leave a thumbs up make sure you subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any tutorial that i post whether it's on woocommerce elementor or wordpress and as usual i'll be seeing you in the next one